Diddy's Los Angeles and Miami mansions raided by SWAT teams. His sons, Justin and King, in handcuffs in their own yard. Law enforcement vehicles parking next to, we assume, Diddy's luxury cars. Fresh details about Diddy's private island are shocking the public, raising questions about what was really happening behind closed doors. How did he use this mansion as leverage to get out of jail? Stay with us as we dive into what the FBI found on his private island and how it changed everything about the case. Inside Diddy's luxurious Star Island mansion, Diddy has been a longtime resident of Star Island, a luxurious and private community near the heart of Miami. Known for its exclusivity, Star Island is a man-made retreat that has attracted many celebrities over the years. Covering 86 acres, this gated neighborhood is only accessible by boat or through a single bridge that connects it to the MacArthur Causeway, further ensuring the privacy of its elite residents. Diddy first made his mark on the island in 2003 when he purchased a massive estate from music executive Tommy Mottola. This sprawling property with nine bedrooms and 12 bathrooms was bought for $14.5 million. The home features high-end amenities that match the lifestyle of someone with Diddy's status. However, Diddy wasn't content with just one mansion on this celebrity-studded island. Nearly two decades later, Diddy expanded his footprint on Star Island by acquiring the home next door. This time, he bought the estate from none other than Grammy-winning musicians Gloria and Emilio Estefan. The second property, purchased in 2021 for $35 million, added another 1.3 acres to Diddy's estate. It includes an 8,000-square-foot mansion with six bedrooms and 10 bathrooms creating a total of 15 bedrooms and over 20 bathrooms between the two homes. A wide range of conspiracy theories are swirling online. One of them is, is that it's located near shipping containers, which some believe could be linked to trafficking. People are talking about how close his private island is to Dodge Island, a larger area filled with many shipping containers. Some speculate that this could have been a possible route for illegal activities, including trafficking. There are also discussions about how strange it is for Diddy to live on an island so close to such a busy shipping area, especially since the only way to get there is by boat, passing through U.S. Coast Guard patrols. So, what have we here? One of the reasons why Star Island is so attractive to high-profile figures like Diddy is its combination of privacy and proximity to the action. The island is only a short drive from Miami's best restaurants, shopping centers, and nightlife, while still feeling like a world apart due to its secluded location and high level of security. Residents can also enjoy the convenience of being close to the airport, making it easy to travel when needed. Diddy has taken full advantage of his properties on the island. He is known for hosting lavish parties, including his famous New Year's Eve bash, which has attracted celebrities like DJ Khaled, Travis Scott, and Future. Diddy also played a leading role in welcoming Rick Ross to the island in 2023, when the rapper purchased a $37 million mansion down the street. As a welcoming gesture, Diddy gifted Ross a custom golf cart, emphasizing the intimate and private nature of the island. Rick Ross isn't the only celebrity who has lived on that island. It's home to many celebrities and billionaires. Who are they? And when did they purchase properties on the island? Let's uncover the truth. Celebrities and billionaires who were Diddy's neighbors on this island. One of Diddy's notable neighbors is Philip Frost, a longtime healthcare investor and the CEO of Opco Health, a major diagnostics company. Frost, along with his wife Patricia, has been a major supporter of the arts and sciences in Miami. The couple is behind the Philip and Patricia Frost Museum of Science and the Patricia and Philip Frost Art Museum, both major cultural landmarks in the city. Their mansion is the largest on Star Island, sitting on a sprawling lot that covers over six acres. The Frost's home is a massive three-story mansion with over 31,000 square feet of living space. The property is valued at over $142 million, making it one of the most valuable homes in the area. Another high-profile figure on Star Island 
is hedge fund billionaire Ken Griffin, the founder and CEO of Citadel. Griffin has been buying up land on Star Island since 2020 and now owns more property on the island than anyone else, including the Frosts. In total, Griffin owns around 6.5 acres of land spread across seven addresses on the island. One of his most notable purchases was a mansion once owned by Alex Rodriguez, which he bought back for $45.5 million. Jennifer Lopez, one of the most famous celebrities in the world, also made Star Island her home when she purchased a property there in 2020. With then fiance Alex Rodriguez, the couple's home was a beautiful Florida-style mansion with views of Biscayne Bay. Another well-known resident is Lisa Hochstein, a reality TV star best known for her appearances on The Real Housewives of Miami. She and her husband, Leonard Hochstein, who is a prominent plastic surgeon, live in a mansion that has become famous due to its appearance on the show. The Hochsteins initially purchased a classical-style home on Star Island, but chose to demolish and rebuild it in 2012, creating a new, more modern structure while still retaining some of the classical elements. Stuart Miller, the CEO of Lennar Corporation, one of the largest home construction companies in the world, is another major figure on Star Island. Miller owns multiple properties on the island, and his influence can be seen in the construction and development of several homes there. As the head of an international real estate development company, it's no surprise that Miller has played a role in shaping the look and feel of Star Island. His properties are often occupied by his family or sold to other wealthy residents, making him a key player in the island's real estate market. For Diddy, living on a Star Island means sharing the neighborhood with other famous faces and high-powered individuals. The island's privacy and exclusivity led to an FBI raid sparking numerous conspiracy theories that went viral on the internet. Let's know about it. Conspiracy theories related to Star Island Mansion. After raiding Diddy's Miami mansion, federal officers revealed shocking details about certain rooms in the house. According to sources from the Department of Homeland Security, the mansion had specific rooms filled with inappropriate toys, bondage equipment, hidden cameras, and lingerie. During those searches, agents seized evidence of the crimes charged in this indictment. They seized firearms and ammunition, including three defaced AR-15s and a large-capacity drum magazine. They also seized evidence of the freak-offs, electronic devices that contain images and videos of the freak-offs with multiple victims. The rooms appeared to be used exclusively for horrible activities. The cameras were reportedly placed in many different spots, capturing everything from angles that those involved would never have been aware of. These rooms were said to host what Diddy called freak-offs, which were described as long, substance-fueled parties where victims were allegedly forced to engage in activities against their will. The officers compared Diddy's behavior to that of Jeffrey Epstein, claiming that these gatherings lasted for days. The use of hidden cameras raised major concerns, as victims may not have been aware they were being recorded during these disturbing events. After these horrifying secrets about the mansion came to light, while we don't know if this theory is true or not, it was revealed in court that Diddy tried to use his mansion to get out of jail. Let's find the truth about it. Diddy offers Star Island Mansion in second bail attempt. In his second attempt to be released from jail, Diddy offered his Star Island Mansion as part of a $50 million bail package. Today, the music mogul made a last-ditch effort to get out of jail, offering a $50 million bond as he awaits trial on sex trafficking charges in Local 10's Bridget Matter. Diddy's defense team hoped this plan would convince the court to release him under strict conditions, including home detention, GPS monitoring, and limited visitors. His lawyers argued that Diddy was trustworthy and willing to follow all the proposed rules to ensure his release. The $50 million bail would have been co-signed by Diddy, along with several family members, including his mother, sister, and three adult sons. The defense also offered additional security measures, such as restrictions on who could visit him, especially limiting female visitors. They were ready to use Diddy's $48 million Star Island mansion as collateral, believing that this combination of conditions would satisfy the court. However, 
U.S. District Judge Andrew L. Carter denied the offer. Despite Diddy's proposed bail plan, the judge ruled that it wasn't enough to protect the community or prevent Diddy from potentially threatening witnesses in his case. Sean Diddy Combs is spending his day in a New York City jail cell rather than sitting here at his Star Island mansion. That's after a judge yesterday denied his legal team's request for a $50 million bond. It has also been revealed that just before being indicted on federal charges, Diddy quietly settled the $18.8 million mortgage on this mansion. The home, valued at $48.5 million, was a key part of his efforts to prepare for the legal trouble that lay ahead. During a tense bond hearing, his lawyer explained that paying off the mortgage was part of a strategy to build trust with the court. In case you guys don't know, Diddy has been denied bail multiple times as he awaits trial in a serious case. The rejection came from Circuit Judge William J. Nardini who ruled to keep Diddy in jail while a panel of judges reviewed his request for bail. Diddy's lawyers appealed to the second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals on September the 30th after two judges had already denied his release. Even with these repeated attempts, the court has maintained its stance that he should stay in jail. Now, Diddy's case is set to go to trial on May 5th, 2025. His new trial judge, Arun Subramanian, has not yet been asked to consider bail again. But during a recent hearing, he mentioned he might be open to discussing the possibility in the future. Diddy's lawyers also brought up concerns about his treatment at the Metropolitan Detention Center, a facility known for its issues with poor conditions. We made a bail appeal uh, to Judge Carter. Uh, it did not go our way. Um, the fight continues. Uh, we're not, we're, we're, we're not, we're not giving up by a long shot. I told Mr. Combs, um, I'm going to try and get his case to trial as quickly as possible. I'm going to try and minimize the amount of time he spends in very, very difficult and I believe inhumane uh, housing conditions in the, in the special housing unit of the Metropolitan Detention Facility. It seems like everything is going against Diddy. He couldn't convince the judge and had to live in such conditions. But what about his other properties? Some of his assets are under the FBI's radar. Let's explore them. Other Diddy properties that are under the FBI's radar. In March, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security raided Diddy's luxurious mansion in the Holmby Hills area of Los Angeles. Diddy bought this impressive property in 2014 for $40 million. The mansion is quite large, covering 17,000 square feet and includes a guest house of 3,009 square feet. It features luxurious amenities such as a lagoon-style swimming pool with a grotto, connected by an underwater swimming tunnel. The home also has a 35-seat theater, a gym, and a wine room, making it a prime example of extravagant living. Along with the recent raid, there are conspiracy theories surrounding Diddy's Los Angeles mansion. Some fans on social media platforms have claimed that there might be an underground tunnel connecting his mansion to the famous Playboy Mansion. This rumor suggests a link between the two properties, but it remains unconfirmed. Well, Diddy has owned a private jet called Combs Air for a few years now. He reportedly spent $60 million on this luxury Gulfstream G550 as a gift to himself. The jet is custom made, painted in sleek black, and has an interior designed to fit his status as a high-profile entertainer. However, his jet has been tied to some serious accusations. In December 2023, an unnamed woman filed a lawsuit against Diddy Harve Pierre and another man, accusing them of trafficking and other inappropriate things. According to the lawsuit, the woman was 17 years old when she was allegedly trafficked. The lawsuit claims that after meeting Pierre in Michigan in 2003, she was convinced by Diddy to board his private jet to New Jersey. After the flight, the woman was allegedly taken to a recording studio in New York, where she was given certain substances and mistreated by multiple men. Moreover, conspiracy theories have surfaced online, with some fans suggesting that Diddy might still be free and traveling the world on his jet while a body double is in jail. These rumors gained attention when a social media influencer broke down the theory, pointing out that Diddy's jet has been spotted in places like New Zealand. 
moving on, he also owns a private yacht that is a perfect reflection of his love for luxury and hosting big, lavish parties. It can accommodate up to 12 guests in six luxurious staterooms. It's the ideal setting for the star-studded parties Diddy is known for. The yacht comes with a large bar, a projector, and even a stage area, making it perfect for live performances and events at sea. For those who enjoy fine dining, the dining area offers an exceptional experience with high-end meals in a luxurious setting. Guests can also relax on the sun deck, enjoying the views and soaking up the sun, or unwind in the yacht's comfortable living area. The VIP room is one of the standout features of this yacht, complete with a folding balcony that allows guests to take in the stunning ocean views. Below deck, there's an area reserved for cars, tenders, and other toys that add to the fun and excitement of being aboard. Diddy has thrown countless parties on this yacht. What happens behind the glamorous facade of Hollywood's elite parties? Joe Rogan unpacks the controversy surrounding Sean Diddy Combs, uncovering a tangled web of rumors, conspiracies, and hidden power plays. Rogan leaves no stone unturned from questioning the existence of the infamous Diddy tapes to revealing legal entanglements of celebrities in Diddy's orbit. Are these just sensational rumors or glimpses into Hollywood's darkest secrets? The initial shock, Joe Rogan's reaction to the Diddy allegations. When the allegations against Sean Diddy Combs emerged, Joe Rogan quickly reacted, expressing disbelief and intrigue. On his podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, Rogan frequently dives into celebrity controversies, and Diddy's situation was no exception. The allegations against Diddy, ranging from misconduct to financial improprieties, have led to significant media attention. For Rogan, this controversy isn't just about Diddy, it's a window into the darker side of Hollywood that he often explores. In his initial response, Rogan emphasized the magnitude of the case, highlighting how Diddy's legal troubles appear eerily similar to the Jeffrey Epstein scandal. Rogan's guests, such as Israel Adesanya, pointed out that the music mogul's connections with Epstein weren't just industry rumors, but had deeper, unsettling implications. Rogan and his guests speculated that the similarities between the two figures might indicate a more widespread pattern in Hollywood, suggesting that Diddy's parties, like Epstein's gatherings, could have served as elaborate traps. Rogan's reaction wasn't just limited to expressing shock. He also discussed the broader repercussions for Diddy's associates. Rogan pointed out how powerful individuals in the entertainment industry have historically used their connections to avoid consequences. He questioned if the same would happen with Diddy or if the tide was finally turning. This perspective, often explored on his show, underscores Rogan's skepticism about the accountability of high-profile figures. Rogan examined how the legal fallout might affect the broader entertainment industry in another episode. He noted that celebrities and industry insiders who once associated with Diddy are now distancing themselves to protect their brands and reputations. The media attention surrounding the case has prompted some celebrities to make statements or clarify their past connections with Diddy. Rogan also compared Diddy's situation to previous scandals, including those involving Harvey Weinstein and Bill Cosby, to further engage his audience. Rogan emphasized that although these cases led to significant public backlash and legal consequences, the pattern of behavior was often allowed to persist for years before anything was done. As Rogan put it, whether Diddy's case will follow the same trajectory or if justice will finally prevail. Could Diddy's situation be a turning point for accountability in Hollywood, or will it be another case swept under the rug? What connections does Diddy's case have with the notorious Jeffrey Epstein, and how deep do these ties go? The Conspiracy Theories Epstein Connections and Industry Secrets Rogan's commentary often touches on the entertainment industry's hidden networks. In this case, he suggested that Diddy's situation could be part of a larger pattern involving powerful figures in Hollywood. According to Rogan, these figures often use their influence and resources to manipulate others, creating an atmosphere of secrecy and fear. Rogan and Israel Adesanya speculated during a podcast episode about the similarities between Diddy's alleged activities and those of Epstein. 
The pair suggested that Diddy's infamous parties might have served as an opportunity to gather compromising information about celebrities and politicians, using the recordings as leverage, a practice eerily similar to Epstein's methods. Rogan highlighted how individuals in Diddy's orbit may have participated without realizing the full extent of what they were getting into, only to find themselves compromised later on. The most shocking part of Rogan's analysis came when he hinted at a Diddy list, similar to Epstein's infamous list of associates. Rogan speculated that this list could expose high-profile celebrities and executives who have attended Diddy's controversial gatherings, suggesting that the entertainment industry's power players might have more to fear as investigations continue. If true, this revelation could shake the industry, leading to more inquiries and potentially exposing more hidden secrets. Rogan further emphasized that the implications of these allegations go beyond Diddy. He noted that the industry has a long history of allowing influential figures to operate unchecked, often due to their extensive connections and financial power. By comparing the current situation to past controversies, Rogan questioned whether the industry would finally change or continue to protect its own. As Rogan dives into the connections between Diddy's allegations and larger conspiracy theories, he poses an important question. Are we on the verge of a major industry shakeup? Or, as he warns, will these events be spun into another mystery that eventually fades from public view? His commentary invites viewers to think critically about Hollywood's inner workings and the extent to which these powerful networks operate under the radar. Is the industry's reluctance to confront its dark secrets the real reason Diddy and others have been able to operate unchecked for so long? Will the rumored Diddy list be revealed? And if so, how many more celebrities could be implicated in this ongoing scandal? The Diddy Tapes, fact or fiction? The rumor mill surrounding the Diddy Tapes has become one of the most captivating parts of the controversy. On the Joe Rogan experience, Rogan and his guests have explored the possibility that these tapes exist and what they might reveal. These recordings feature footage from Diddy's infamous parties. Uh, some believe they could contain compromising situations involving various high-profile individuals. Rogan's commentary suggests these real tapes could significantly impact the entertainment industry. Joe Rogan doesn't shy away from speculating about the potential fallout. He explains how these tapes might expose the behavior of those in attendance and reveal a systematic attempt to use these recordings as leverage. He points out that, similar to the way Jeffrey Epstein allegedly used his tapes to control and manipulate powerful figures, Diddy might have been engaging in a similar practice. The origin of these tapes remains a mystery. Rogan frequently mentions the federal raids on Diddy's properties, including reports that authorities were not only seizing assets, but potentially erasing digital evidence. Speculation suggests that those in power might protect themselves by removing incriminating footage. Rogan, along with other guests like Andrew Schultz, discusses how the timing of these raids and the lack of transparency raise more questions than answers. A fascinating aspect of Rogan's commentary revolves around the media's role in shaping the narrative. He often criticizes how the press downplays stories like this, suggesting that powerful figures might use their influence to suppress damaging information. Rogan highlights how, in many cases, Stories that involve high-profile names often fade from the public eye, leaving the truth buried under layers of rumor and conspiracy. One of the more detailed discussions involves the theory that these tapes are a part of a larger operation to entrap celebrities. Rogan speculates that Diddy's gatherings could have been staged to gather compromising material, a practice that is not unheard of in Hollywood's history. By aligning this theory with past scandals, Rogan emphasizes that if these tapes were to be fully exposed, they might not only implicate Diddy, but also extend to numerous celebrities who once considered him an ally. Rogan's skepticism, however, is clear. He repeatedly mentions that while the idea of these tapes is captivating, the lack of concrete evidence makes it challenging to differentiate between fact and fiction. He urges his audience to approach such stories cautiously, highlighting the dangers of assuming guilt based solely on rumors and incomplete reports. Yet, Rogan admits that the allure of these tapes is hard to ignore, and if they exist, they could represent one of the biggest scandals in entertainment history.
could these tapes indicate a more sinister operation involving multiple powerful figures? Or is it another Hollywood rumor? If these tapes were to come to light, how many celebrities would find their careers and reputations jeopardized? The White Party's Diddy's Alleged Events Joe Rogan's discussions about Diddy often return to the topic of his legendary white parties. These events, widely attended by celebrities, are rumored to be more than just glamorous gatherings. Rogan and his guests explore the darker aspects of these parties, where it's claimed that attendees were sometimes recorded without their knowledge. The idea is that Diddy may have used these recordings as a form of control, much like what is speculated about Epstein's operations. Rogan's guests, including MMA fighter Israel Adesanya, have expressed relief at avoiding these parties. Adesanya mentioned on the podcast how fortunate he felt not to have attended despite receiving an invitation. This anecdote reinforces the suspicion surrounding Diddy's events and the belief that those who did attend may have unknowingly compromised themselves. Rogan also draws attention to reports that substances were often involved in these events. He speculates that certain practices at Diddy's parties might have been used to lower inhibitions and create an atmosphere where guests could be manipulated into compromising situations. The stories about these parties, as Rogan explains, are reminiscent of past celebrity scandals where the line between innocent fun and orchestrated manipulation blurred. The show often circles back to why certain high-profile celebrities repeatedly attended these parties despite the growing rumors. As frequent guests, Rogan and Andrew Schultz discuss whether these celebrities were complicit or naive, lured in by the glitz and promises of networking opportunities. This segment of Rogan's podcast highlights the blurred ethics in Hollywood, where personal and professional boundaries are easily crossed when fame and influence are at play. Interestingly, Rogan speculates that Diddy's sudden legal issues might have prompted some of his previous associates to distance themselves quickly, highlighting a pattern of celebrities trying to escape the fallout. This observation aligns with historical patterns in Hollywood, where figures associated with scandal often find themselves isolated when their influence wanes. If so many celebrities attended these white parties, are any of them also at risk of facing legal or public relations consequences? Could the nature of these gatherings reveal more about Hollywood's deeper, hidden culture of manipulation and control?